Hi everybody, this is Hunter Allen and I'd just like to show you a, a little bit about uh, some of these files that uh, my article is on. <clears throat> and um, this is really, you know, uh, this athlete, this mountain biker who has um, some issues with his, basically his, uh, his one leg, his right leg is just going numb on him. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, the right leg is is got a he's got a pinched nerve in in his back that's causing this right leg to go numb and so uh, we've been gathering a bunch of data on him trying to figure out you know can we identify what's going wrong with him uh, is there some kind of postural change can we change his position on his bike um, or not so here's a, a little a little kind of video on this that accompanies this article that you may be reading so. Uh, here we have normal pedaling for him. So uh, the first thing that you do anytime you get the Type R and you start using it, you use it so that you have normal, you figure out what is normal, right? We have to find out, okay, how do I pedal? What does my pedaling print look like? What's normal? And this is really normal for him. So his uh, foot angular range is pretty, pretty similar, 51.7, 51.1, almost identical here. This is his right leg range here. Now he's got some, uh, he does little bursts and stuff. So that's what you're seeing here is his pelvic angle and pelvic rotation all through these things. These little bursts are through here. So that's some of that data that you're seeing here. Torso angle, torso rotation. So everything looks really steady and smooth and we don't really have any changes in any of this data. Um, it, it's just outputting a normal pattern of movement for, for him, and that's pretty basic. You can see that here in these blue points in his uh, PSI plot, or what I like to call the pedaling print, is uh, these are all pulling up. So anytime he gets out of the saddle and pulls up on the pedal stroke, that's what's happening right here. These are all lower cadence type efforts here. Um, so that's a, a thing that, that really is just happening on, on the upstroke there when he gets out of the saddle. Now let's look at one that has um, data where there there isn't um, there is change and uh, this is one right here where um, it, it shows him a little bit here where we've got some change and so that's a really clear indicator of what's going on so we're gonna come down here and we'll look at uh, the second one I believe is what we want here um, I think that's the one I'm looking for and um, that way we can see that uh, the interval itself and uh, is that one yep there's a second one right there so that one is the interval itself and this is the one that that we see a change in some of this data now these changes are subtle right you have to be um, used to looking at this data somewhat to understand that there is a change uh, and these are the metrics that really change in here. So first off, we're looking at the foot angular range right here. So remember, this is this is what's happening with the foot. How is that angle changing? And these things are pretty consistent and stable all the way out to around this point right here. And all of a sudden, we see that right leg really change. So here at 46, 45, here is 50 degrees. Even we're starting to see it a little bit here. Anything under 50 degrees in uh, a range of movement is, is definitely when he has this numbness problem. So you can see out here, it's really a lot lower here. Same thing with his leg angular range. Here is his norm right here around 60 degrees. And then when it starts to, to taper off down in the 50 degree ranges here, 53, 54, 55, then even moves even lower here 52 then i know that his leg is becoming um you know more numb and he's not able to really get that range of motion the torso rotation is pretty interesting too because if you see this is this normal torso rotation around 10 degrees or so 10 12 degrees and then when it starts to occur you start to see that his torso rotation really reduces down to six percent um in a in a big way so that's a real clear indicator. Something has changed, all right? Something has changed. So that's a, a, a key thing that we wanna look at. So when we see that then, um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that we understand a little bit about you know what's changed and then can we do anything about it? And what really here is, um, is, is critical here is that we 
we learn that um, some of this uh, this this angle of of uh, movement, and we're going to check out another file here, is a is a really key part to this. Okay, so let's look at this one here, um, and uh, we can see a little bit more um, data in here that that when this occurs, when his pattern occurs of of um, of um, numbness, that pattern really occurs because it's um, it, it's a pelvic angle, all right. And there's a, a torso angle that occurs in, and if he stays in that angle, then he's going to continue to have um, these problems. So let's look here at this 20 minute right here. Uh, and we'll see a little bit more about this. And that's really what we're trying to figure out is we're trying to find out like, okay, is this pelvic angle right here a critical part to making sure that he holds his, his uh, upper body in a particular way? And if he's long as he holds his pelvic angle in, a, in the correct way, and as long as he holds his um, uh, pelvis, then he is generally in a good place, okay? So that doesn't bring on the pinching of that nerve, and that doesn't bring on uh, any of the problems that he has with that right leg. So that's what I'm looking for here is this, in this case, we're above um, you know, 60 degrees, 70 degrees here on these uh, out of the saddle things. That's really the, the magic number here is if we can keep, keep him closer to 70 degrees in his pelvic angle, then he really doesn't have any problems with this pinching. The torso angle, that one is a little bit, um, we're looking at trying to keep that above 25 degrees if possible. Um, now, again, this changes when he gets a little lower in the saddle, of course, so that's going to go down. But that also is part of the thing, the part of the problem is when he tries to get more arrow, that goes away. Uh, and he starts to get that pinching of the nerve. So he has to be very careful for how long he stays in this arrow position and it comes back to that place. All right, so that's a critical one here to look at. Let's look at another one here that um, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's ridden and hasn't had any trouble with this because that's truly the, we see areas where he has trouble and then we have times when he doesn't have trouble. And it's really this time that, uh, and we need to define those two things and what the difference is between those things. Because that's that's definitely a, a contributing factor to this numbness. So again, if we just look at this pure angle here, torso angle here, his average is 30, okay, and pelvic angle is 61. So as long as these numbers, if the torso is over 30 and the pelvis is over 60, then we're in a good place for him. So that's a great thing that we learned about his uh, particular posture on the bike. Now, what do we do about this? Well, once we learn that if we if we maintain those angles are greater, all we have to do is change that right on the, the head unit and then say, okay, I want him looking at pelvic angle and torso angle while he's riding so that, that way he can see that he needs to maintain those angles or greater and it will prevent him from getting that uh, that dead leg in the right leg. So it doesn't solve the underlying solution. This athlete's got some other issues that we need to work on and he's working on, but it really is something that's a critical piece to this that it helps him for races, make sure that he's as fit as he can possibly be and uh, he, can, he can make this happen and it doesn't impact him in the races. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, more details in the article. So uh, if you if you uh, if this resonates with you, or if you're looking for it, um, a little more detail. Read the article. There's some great screenshots in there that'll help you out. I'm Hunter Allen with Peaks Coaching Group, uh, and uh, this is a great uh, talk about how the Leomo Type R can make a difference in just your position on the bicycle. Thanks a lot.